Whether you're about to start investing for the first time or you've been investing in the stock market for quite a while, mistakes can happen at all different levels. In honor of the upcoming Halloween for 2018, I wanted to make a video that covers some of the most common but scary investment mistakes that I've seen throughout the course of my life. Now sure, this guy is pretty scary. But the idea of losing your hard-earned money very quickly in the stock market, money that you've worked so hard to earn, probably working at a job you don't like, now that is truly terrifying. What is that? Ah! Whoa! What the hell? It's that thing again! In this video, I hope to help you recognize and avoid as many of these mistakes as possible in your investing journey. I have four common investing mistakes to share with you in all. So let the felling begin. As we cover these mistakes and as we go through the video, pay close attention to how interconnected these mistakes actually are to one another. You'll be amazed. The first common error when it comes to investing is lack of risk management. One of the first attributes that causes higher risk is lack of diversification in one's investment portfolio. This is when an investor puts a large percentage of their total capital into one or two stocks such as Amazon or Facebook, and neglect diversifying future funds into other investments. How many of you guys know somebody right now who is doing this? This strategy can go on smoothly for quite a while, maybe even years at a time if they pick the right stocks, but it's only a matter of time before this type of investor gets burned. I myself have experienced this, but luckily I didn't have too much money at stake. The next item I associate with risk management is position sizing. Accompanied with lack of diversification, and risk is its cousin known as position sizing. Position sizing is understanding how much money to invest into any one stock or investment at any given time to protect one's capital. One of my close friends knows a guy who will invest over 80 to 90% of his account balance at a given time to trade one stock, and that one stock is Best Buy. Usually every time Best Buy is about to release a new earnings report, that's when this investor comes into play. This is someone trading thirty to forty thousand dollars all within a few minutes to make a quick one or maybe a five percent return on his or her money. To my knowledge, this particular investor has not made much money implementing this strategy because they're right on Best Buy as much as they are wrong in trying to time when to purchase and sell the stock. When you look at such a short trading period, it's really a gamble. Would you put ninety percent of your capital in your brokerage account at risk? to make a quick one to 5% return? I sure hope not. Also associated with risk is actually an investor who doesn't take enough risk. Do you know someone who is constantly talking about how they need to save for retirement, but they never seem to get around to doing it? Some are fearful of another market crash and some just do not want to part with any extra cash they might have to invest. Not investing at all is one of the biggest risks out there when it comes to risk management. So I hope you don't find yourself in that boat. The next most common investment mistake is over relying on the opinion of others. Now how many of you, be honest, have actually asked someone for investment advice or you've asked somebody for a, a hot stock pick or an ETF, what mutual fund to buy, etc. I know when I was younger and I had no experience, I certainly have. I can't even begin to tell you guys how many questions and private messages I get over YouTube and in my daily life about this kind of stuff. People ask me all the time, Mike, what stocks or ETF should I buy? And I'm truly honored that you guys value my opinions and my thoughts that much. It means a lot to me, it really does. But you should never take someone's opinion at face value, even if it's coming from me or some other YouTuber. Always do your own research. Just because you hear someone speak highly of a particular stock or investment doesn't mean it will be the right investment for you. For example, two people could purchase Apple stock one person could make money and the other person could lose money, all depending on when they buy and how they manage that particular investment. The biggest issue here with this, in my opinion, is that when somebody reaches out to me for investment advice of what stock should I buy, how should I allocate stocks in my portfolio or, or whatever, I get the feeling that that person has not done any research, they're, they're not willing to put the time in to learn how to invest and what to invest in in order to meet their own individual goals. And in my opinion, that's the big issue here is that they need, a person needs to take some time to learn what they're investing their hard earned money in. Don't just rely on my opinion, don't just rely on others' opinion. At the end of the day, it's your money and when you place that investment, 
All that is on you. It's on nobody else. It's your choice. And so you have to live with, with it, whether it goes good or bad. So to hedge this risk, take time to learn what you are investing in. Read books on investing. Educate yourself before throwing your hard-earned money at something just because your friend or someone else told you on YouTube. Do not invest in something that you do not understand. It will get you in trouble fast. Even if you're working with a financial advisor, take time to understand what they would like you to invest your money in. Ask the advisor why they think that would be a good investment and why would that be a good investment for you. Remember, no one, and I literally mean no one, will take better care of your money more than you. So make sure you are educating yourself in these areas and not over relying on the opinion of others. The third most common error is investing with your emotions and not with your head. People who do not invest or who are new to investing do not understand how emotional investing can actually be. Watching the stock market and the value of your investment go up, go down, go up, go down several times a day can be very stressful. Now just as you might want to sit there and watch the stock market and your stock investment or whatever you're invested in do its thing, do its little dance on the charts, you have to watch your emotions just as closely. Some of my largest investment mistakes I've made in my life stem from the lack of emotional discipline. I mismanaged some of the best investments due to my emotions getting out of control. Had I controlled my emotions and made better decisions, my portfolio would probably be worth an additional five to $10,000 more than it is right at this moment. <laughs> hey, that's not funny, man. All because I was letting my fear and emotions drive my investment decisions. Getting control of my emotions took years. It really did, but if you play your cards right, it will get easier and easier for you over time. As you learn to recognize and learn how to mitigate some of these common investment mistakes, you'll actually become more emotionally calm as you start to do the right types of things with your investments. It will calm you down and emotions will be less and less of an issue for you in the future. Like I said though, it took me years, like three or four years until I got to that point. Aside from the things we have already discussed, here are a few extra tips to calm your emotions. The first one is only invest money that you can actually afford to lose. Number two, stop consuming the majority of the articles written by the media. Hundreds, if not thousands of articles are written about companies every single day. But I can tell you from my personal experience, they are not written for your benefits. They are written because that is the author's day job and that is how they make a living. Their main priority is to make money and to get you to read their articles. Every time I was influenced to purchase a stock or sell a stock based on an article I read online, that decision turned out to be the wrong decision eight out of 10 times. It was absolutely ridiculous. So because of that experience, I now ignore most articles written about companies I'm invested in. The next thing you can do to ring in your emotions is stop day trading. Short-term trading is not for the faint of heart, so I do not recommend it for most people, especially if you're brand new to investing. Active trading can take a serious toll on your emotions and your health. What I have found is that over 80% of people who actively trade stocks, not only do they lose money, they consistently lose money doing it. How do I know? Because I used to do it, and it was no fun, no fun. I quickly lost $3,000 pretty darn fast. The moment I quit trying to time the market and started investing for the long term is when I started to consistently make money in the stock market. Oh my gosh. My wife was so thrilled when I told her I was going to stop trading stocks. She was so happy because I was no longer, she knew what that meant I was no longer going to be an emotional wreck when it came to investing. Now we're going to move on to the fourth and final mistake. And this last one, is the mistake I consider not only to be the most common, but the biggest mistake of all that I see new investors make and even some experienced investors. This next item of discussion, this next mistake, it's truly what separates, in my opinion, the amateur from the professional. The fourth most common investing mistake is investing without a strategy, goals, or any sort of plan. Whenever someone asks me over the internet, what to invest in, I immediately know they do not have an investment plan in place. They probably have no idea what they are trying to accomplish in their portfolio, and they do not have investment goals. Now for most people, and including myself at one point, this is the last thing that an investor usually does, 
is they usually do all their investing up front and then later on they go back and make a plan. It's completely backwards. You wanna start with making a plan first and then start investing. Now let me ask you guys this. When somebody is about to go start a business, what is usually the first piece of advice they're given? Anyone? Anybody? Let me help you out. It's to go make a plan, to write out a written detailed investment plan before ever starting the business. And investing is really no different. Before starting your investment journey, write out an investment plan. Your plan should include some of the following items. Define what your investment goals are. What do you want your portfolio to do for you in the future? 20, 30, 40 years from now. How will you educate yourself on learning more about investing? How much money are you willing to invest every single month without ever touching it again until you have enough to retire? How will you behave or act if the stock market loses 50% or more of its value? How many different investments will you own? What industries or sectors of the market will you invest in? What areas of the market are you most knowledgeable about based on your work experience? As I wrap up this video today, guys, I want to say that don't kick yourself if you find yourself making these mistakes. To be honest, I've made every single mistake that I've mentioned in this video, and I've made it multiple times. So don't be down or too harsh on yourself if you've done these things. But just know that it's time that these are mistakes and it's time to correct them. And once you do so, your investment portfolio might start to make money and you'll not only that is you'll start to calm your nerves, your emotions, and you'll begin to become a better and better investor over time. Now, just like most other things in life, making mistakes is truly part of the learning experience. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, it took me about three to four years to overcome these mistakes until I felt like I had a good grip on every single one of these areas. I hope that by you taking the time to watch this video and follow some of these guidelines, that it will help you minimize your mistakes as much as possible and lead you to be able to manage your investments more effectively with higher profits and growth in your portfolio going forward. Now, to keep this video as short as possible for you guys, I've only really discussed four mistakes, but I know there's a lot more common errors out there and when it comes to investing. So I would love to hear from you guys down in that comment section down below. Let me know what mistakes you see out there and what you've done to correct them. If you're, and if you're brave enough, share some of your own personal horror stories when it comes to investing. I would, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this kind of stuff and get your thoughts down in that comment section down below. Okay guys, well if you liked the video today, make sure you smash that like button before you leave. Share this information with a friend, especially somebody who's either new to investing or really enjoys investing. I'm sure they'll get a lot out of the information presented in this video. I've included in the description section of this video some links to these some cool articles that have a bunch of common investment mistakes besides the one I mentioned here today. So make sure to check them out. Some of them are written by Investopedia and some other websites as well, other bloggers who, who would like to invest a lot. So make sure to check them out. And if you're not already subscribed to Money in Life TV, well, welcome to the channel. Here on Money in Life TV, our goal is to help you become fiscally fit as we teach finances, investing, and taxes and more on a regular basis. Okay, guys, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me here once again on YouTube. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you all down in the comment section down below. Take care, everybody. And remember, now take this information and use it to live your life uncaged. Have a great Halloween, everybody. Love you guys. Peace.